compared? How was the hip hop compared to you back then to now? Oh, it was non-existent. It was non-existent back then. Like we had a dude, um, Nucleus and Chain Reaction. Nucleus used to put on um, these freestyle battles, mm. and these freestyle battles were bringing out a lot of people because we didn't really have um, that much. They didn't have venues for local shows and stuff like that, right? Yeah. So he'd be selling out places like the Palace, the you know Flame Central. Yeah. yeah. They used to be called the Palace, right? And he'd be selling that place out, and we go up there and it'd be a freestyle battle. But it wouldn't be like that. Um, what's that fucking shit? What's that Toronto shit? Um, um, King of the Dot shit. Like, like you're not fucking like I'm not gonna fucking know who you are. Study you for two months, write down bars about you, and then come at you like oh, okay. off the top of a dome. I haven't even met you before, and we're going at each other, right? Okay. And this shit would pop off. Um, I know the first time I ever grabbed the mic in front and, and rapped in front of people was on a karaoke machine in the middle of uh, Victoria Park, right? And people just gathered around trying to give us money, and we were just doing it for fun and shit like that. So I mean, as far as venues like. Anything that, like what we're doing right now wasn't existing. Mm -hmm. Doing, opening up for shows, like we opened up for Naughty by Nature and Buster Rhymes back then was, was a rarity. Yeah. Like we had to get like mad connections and, and do whatever, whatever to get on the side of that and shit like that. So it was tough back then. Spe and, and even like having resources to put out quality music. Yeah. So you know? there wasn't as much studios back then than there is now. <laughs> there was a few, but... You're working with Cubase, you're working on the big tube monitors and stuff like that. Okay. You're jacking speakers, you're you're going to Lana McQuaid and putting shit out on lease and not paying them back. You know what? We had like it was a grind, it was it was dirty as fuck back then. <laughs> Most definitely. But do you think Calgary's ready for hip hop now? <laughs> Realistically. Um, I think anywhere's ready for hip hop. Anywhere's ready for hip hop. Whether they're willing to accept it, um, in its form, in its present form, um, I don't think it is. I think with Calgary, um hip hop changes every five to six years. Yeah. And once there's a change in hip hop, mm -hmm. Calgary's not ready yet. You got old heads talking about, I don't like this new shit. You got new shit talking about, fuck the old heads. Mm -hmm. Like, there's no respect for the bridge between it. So. So, how do you bridge it? What do you, what do you think would be the best sort of solution to actually push hip hop then? You gotta make connections. You gotta make connections. You gotta, you gotta support what you like, even if it's not in your lane, right? Mm -hmm. Like, I, I talk mad shit about trap music, but I support it. I like it. Mm -hmm. Like I can't do it. It's not my lane. I'm not making trap beats. I'm not rapping over trap beats in a trap style. Mm -hmm. But it's not my lane. But I support it. There's a lot of these young cats that are coming up um, underneath us that I support. Right? Bishop, Noah, Mino. Like you know everybody. I support the hell out of them because they're making good music. If you support good music and don't, you gotta have open mind about shit. You can't just be like, oh that shit's new. I don't fuck with that shit. I ain't fucking with them. So why are you gonna, you know, it's like, it's hip-hop is a culture, if, it, if you have a culture, you're supposed to enlighten your culture. But then would you comprom not compromise your sound? Because, like you said, you don't do trap, but if trap's popping at the moment, would you do a trap song? Nah, uh -huh, because I'm popping always. <clears throat> I can sell three albums I'm popping, I'll do trap beats, but I'm not gonna... Let me put it this way, if trap's pop, if you hear my shit now that what you just heard, yeah. and trap pops and it's large, and people are going on trap and blowing up, if you hear me on a trap beat, you look at me funny. Like, that's not this nigga. Yeah. That's not his lane. Why is he doing this? Because he wants to jump in and feel good. You know what I'm saying? If I hang out with, with a bunch of Jamaicans, I'm not going to speak, start speaking Patois. That's not me. They be making my niggas and my team, but that's not what... I'm not, I'm not Jamaican. You know what I'm saying? So I'm not going to assimilate to something because it's popular. Makes sense. You know what I'm saying? And that's what Calgary does. They assimilate. A lot of people assimilate. But saying that, one of the things... So, for instance, Billy. Mm. Billy said to me that Calgary doesn't have a sound. Hmm. We, we assimilate. If something's popping, someone's gonna do what's popping. There's no, there's Toronto, there's a Toronto sound, Toronto slang. Mm -hmm. And if you hear people speaking slang in Calgary, it's a Toronto slang. Vancouver has a sound, Manitoba has a sound. I mean, Man it, I mean, you go to Manitoba, you don't wanna be there. Nobody wants to be in Manitoba. It's just cold as a motherfucker. It's 40 degrees for, before wind chill. They're popping, they got a sound. You know what I'm saying? Halifax has a sound. But Calgary doesn't have a sound. Calgary assimilates sound, it's like a, we're the, the, the personification of a melting pot in all shapes and forms. You know what I'm saying? And with hip hop, is the one art form that we really don't have a distinct class for. Mm -hmm. Everybody does, like, if trap music is popping, but there's no, there's no new Calgary, there's no Calgary sound. Like, you could, if you hear a Tory Lanez song, you're like, oh, that's Tory Lanez. If you hear a classified song, that's classified. You hear something from um, whoever's out in Vancouver right now, because they slip in my mind, whoever the fuck they are. Swollen Members, that's a Swollen Members song. But you can hear it, but like, if you listen to Calgary. Yeah. <laughs> you know what? Nah, let me take all that. There is a Calgary sound. It's underground, sun moves and stars, over your head, trying to put big words that, big dictionary words and fit them into small sentences and sound as underground as possible. 
if you want to sound as unmarketable as possible, <laughs> that's your Cal that's a Calgary sound. That's why every time you hear someone that's that has an outside of that lane, mm -hmm. the first thing you say is like you don't sound like you're from Calgary. As soon as I walked in, oh you don't sound like you're from Calgary. Mm -hmm. Bishop, um who's that dude you had on here? I he was on that chopper? Yeah, chopper. Yeah. Chopper. Fucking sick. Sounds American, doesn't he? But the first, <laughs> thank you. He sounds American, but I don't know where he, I don't know his history, or nothing like that. So I don't know if he's born and bred here, but he's making music in Calgary. Mm -hmm. That's a Calgary sound. If you're in Calgary, and that's your sound. Yeah. But everybody is, even with beats. So that sounds like a this beat. You sound like a, that's a Timberland beat. That's a 808 beat. That's, you know what I'm saying? The Calgary doesn't have a sound unless it's trash. And then you say, oh, that sounds like a typical Calgary rapper.